This is the 2021 High Bike All Mountain, and I cannot wait to ride it. This is the highest model in the 2021 All Mountain lineup. It's priced at an ultra competitive £5,599. And at that price point, you're getting a seriously good spec, including Fox Factory suspension. Weight is 23.7 kilos. It's got the 80 Newton meter Yamaha PWX2 motor and a 600 watt hour battery. Everything about the bike is brand new. So an all new geometry, brand new frame, it's full carbon front and rear, mullet setup. It's running on Fox factory suspension. At the front is the Fox factory 38 and the Fox factory DPX2 on the rear. Everything about the bike screams electric mountain bike. You've got these huge oversized tubes, this Yamaha branding showing on the motor and it looks like an absolute beast. I'm, I'm so excited about this bike because it's all new to me. I've never tested this Fox factory fork. I've never ridden this uh, Yamaha PWX2 motor and in the mullet wheel setup with 160 travel it looks like it could be one of the kind of perfect do-it-all e-bikes. High bikes say the goals that they had for this bike was to create a high performance trail bike that's fast, stable, fun and easy to ride. And they say it's not focused just on enduro or downhill but they've tried to make a bike that is a strong uphill performer too. Its geometry is pretty safe. There's nothing wild here. It's got a 65 degree head angle, which seems slack enough for its intended use and a mixed wheel size, which the more I ride across a range of bikes, the more I like. Reaches up to 491 millimeters in XL 460 mil chainstays that they actually increased over the previous model to improve climbing performance and completely revised suspension tuning kinematics that high bikes say improves handling over the previous generation and high bike call out the overall design and look as unapologetically e-performance that means the big e-bike characteristics are shown off and i'd definitely say they've achieved that there's not much hiding that this is an e-bike and i'm cool with that I personally really like the look. Oh. Ooh, ooh. oh man, I tell you what, this motor is an absolute peach. It has 80 Newton meters. It takes a while, I would say a couple of rotations to get going. And then it gives you this kind of whoosh surge of speed, but it does feel quite natural. I'm loving the power delivery. It's got five modes. I'm using it in pretty much in standard mode, but when I want that extra boost, it's got this extra power mode, which just seems to pump on the, uh, the power. It's not totally silent. You can hear it, but it's not like an annoying whine that you get. It's more like a kind of, sounds like a, a turbo, you know, kicking in. It's, uh, it's, it's a nice sound. I don't know how else to put it. It sounds, nice when you're listening to it go. There's not a huge amount of noise when there's not a lot of power being delivered, so it's not like a constant noise. Um, and the bottom bracket, you can hear a little bit of rattling around over some bumpy terrain, but not as much as other motors that are on the market. It looks pretty sweet as well. I think it's a nice looking uh, drive unit. And obviously Yamaha are renowned for making, you know, motocross bikes, super bikes, Yamaha R6, R1. So they've got a real bike heritage. So I am enjoying this motor. The power delivery is good. The only thing I don't like is this massive controller. Hopefully this is gonna be the last generation of bikes that have these horrible clunky displays and just feels a bit cheap and plasticky. It's not a deal breaker. It's just not the most attractive thing. It's really ergonomic. So the switches and the buttons are easy to use, but I would prefer something a little bit more discreet. It's not so offensive that um, I wouldn't buy the bike over. I took the bike out for four days, riding a mixture of uphill, cross country, shuttle style runs, natural trails and bike park. Immediately, what stood out to me was just how stiff everything felt. The full carbon frame and Fox Factory 38 fork felt really stiff. And initially I had a bit of fatigue build up in my arms on the bike park runs. 
but as soon as I fettled a bit with a fork and removed all compression damping, it completely sorted the feel out at the front. It's got the new Fox 38 160mm travel factory, and it's the Fit 4, not the Grip 2. So it's interesting that they've chosen the Fit 4 damper and the Fox DPX2 on the rear with 160mm travel as well. So 160, 160, 29er at the front, 27.5 at the rear. But what that's done is it's made me feel so confident over these rock gardens. They're slightly wet, a little bit greasy, and I just did them blind and the bike tracks over nicely. The rear feels nice and progressive and there's been no harsh bottoms out and there's a lot of mid-stroke support that I'm finding through that linkage. So it's transferred that into confidence for me riding the bike. So just to hit these, they're not massive. They're like red rock gardens, uh, red graded trails. And uh, I've just hit a couple of them blind and have had confidence in the bike that it can look after you. The Fox 38 on the front is stiff enough and burly enough, but quite supple off the top. And the same with the rear. And personally, I like a lot of mid-stroke support, so it doesn't feel like it's too wallowy, but it's still got a nice amount of grip from that DHR2 at the rear. With a weight of 23.7 kilos, I wouldn't say agility is one of the bike's strengths. Instead, the bike is an absolute brute at holding a line and just blasting over the trail. It carries its weight and speed well. If you don't want to move around an obstacle, usually you can just roll straight over it, which is great fun. And when things are a bit more chilled, I found it super comfortable to climb, the fairly long chainstay length helping out a lot here. So I want to show you the integration. The battery, 600 watt hour, is integrated just in the down tube here. It is secured in with a key, but it's got this little plate that is really neat. Um, and it just pulls off, like you pull the plate off and it clips in and it's really snug. And it's one of these kind of plates with the rubber around it. Uh, it just feels like a premium type of quality. And I was speaking to the guys that designed it and one of them uh, previously worked for an automotive company. And they said, this kind of fitting is very popular and very secure in the automotive industry. And they've taken some of those design cues and integrated it into the bike here. There's a few other neat features too, like this modular rail system that allows accessories like water bottles to be carried on the frame. The speed sensor and magnet is well hidden in the chainstay, and lots of bolts have these aluminium circlips on them. I'm not sure how effective they are, but they look great. And most of the frame bolts have torque values printed on them, which is simple, but really neat. I really like it. So about this motor, the Yamaha PWX2. I told you at the beginning, I was really excited to try this motor because I've never used it. I've used the PWX1, uh, but this is the second generation. It's got quite a few new features. The main one really is that the cadence range goes much higher and it'll continue to give you the full power of the motor at a wider cadence, which is great because if you're spinning at like 90, 95, 100, RPM or even more, you're still getting up to the 80 Newton meters. There's a couple of bits though that I want to share with you. Little quirks. It's like a little puppy that just wants to go as soon as you're in uh, like a kind of still position and you've got your foot on the pedals. It senses torque so much and you can just see it wanting to pull away. So it can be a little bit nervous at a standstill. Now I am in the extra power mode at the moment but even if I put it down into the standard mode, which I kind of use mostly, when you're at a standstill and you've got a little bit of pressure on the pedals, it just still wants to kind of pull away. Um, it's probably something that can be solved by software or firmware. So it's no biggie, but just something that I've noticed. Also, I've noticed that you can't get the full 80 Newton meters of power unless you are in extra power mode. So, it's not like some other motors where it looks at the amount of torque that you're putting through and will give you up to 80. So for example, you can be on another motor in trail mode 
and it'll still give you up to the maximum assistance level if you're really kind of gunning it and putting a lot of pressure through the pedals. This motor will only do it when you're in the maximum power mode. So you're not always going to get 80 newton meters in any of the modes underneath that. I do think that's a bit of a shame and I do hope that we get an update from Yamaha to be able to give you up to that 80 newton meters of torque in the lower power modes. So because you don't want extra power all the time because it literally just sends you away like instantly. Gotta say I am pretty impressed with the battery life on this. My watch Garmin says I've done 3000 foot of vertical climbing and I'm on four bars so still got 40% left. I've been using a mixture of the mid mode and the extra power mode which uh, is basically boost uh, turbo. So 3,000 foot, 40%, I reckon you could get 5,000 feet out of climbing. And uh, it's only a 600 watt hour battery, so nothing insanely big in terms of the battery. But the motor has been good, nice and efficient. I'm happy with that in terms of range. So I gotta give credit where credit is due. Here we have a seriously capable electric mountain bike, well-designed, well thought out. It's powerful. The spec is crazy high. And I think High Bike have pulled out a pretty special bike for 2021. I also think it looks fantastic. So what are the negatives? Well, the Yamaha motor does feel a little bit clunky when you're just sitting on the bike. It just kind of wants to go. I think a firmware update will sort that. The controller, it's not good, it's really cheap looking, it feels really cheap and plasticky. The Yamaha motor is also a bit heavier than some of its competitors. At 3.1 kilos, it's around half a kilo more than some of the lighter motors. And paired with the burly build, the big 38mm forks, the bike isn't the lightest, most agile performer. But the positives far outweigh the negatives on this bike. Firstly, the value for money. It's a lot of money, it's 5,000, 599 pounds but what you do get is outstanding value for money i think when you look at what you get a full carbon bike so carbon front triangle carbon rear triangle and for a bike for 5599 pounds that's pretty awesome not only that you get top of the line fox factory 38 suspension which uh, is brand new for 2021 so super stiff fork top of the range suspension fork from Fox and the factory DPX2 shock. Decent wheels, brilliant drivetrain in the Shimano XT. And I think this is my favorite drivetrain. It's super crisp and engages like with lightning speed and accuracy. And the Yamaha PWX2 motor, whilst not amazingly refined, is a very serious contender. Very powerful, very punchy, and it feels pretty natural once you get going and the battery life has been pretty impressive as well from that 600 watt hour internal battery. I found the bike really fun to climb on and because of the way the motor delivers the power paired with a chainstay length, decent out the box tyres and seat angle that it was pretty effortless to get up some pretty steep stuff. Now high bike have learned a thing or two about getting a product to market as well. When the Fly-On was announced a couple of years ago, you couldn't even order it. And deliveries were like six months to a year after they announced it. But this bike is gonna be available almost immediately from your dealer. So by the time you watch this video, you should be able to make a pre-order and delivery start from pretty much immediately, like within the next few weeks or next month. So this is a bike that you can get pretty much now and you're getting a very very top performing electric mountain bike for 2021. I love the look of it, it looks super aggressive, it looks like it means business, the design language is typically high bike so big bulky tubes, really aggressive looking electric mountain bike. This is going straight up there to a bike that I would recommend for 2021. I've really enjoyed my time on it and uh, I actually want to ride it some more. I want to get out on it and uh, ride it a little bit more. If you did like the video, let me know with a thumbs up. It helps me understand what you guys like. If you do have any questions, pop them down below and I'll try and answer as much as I can 
and uh, I bring out weekly e-bike videos, so subscribe if you want to see more of this type of content, and I'll catch up with you soon.